Here we go. <clears throat> so, I already forgot the order, <laughs> but we're gonna go through like some of the machines and some of the, the equipment, uh, starting with the resource well, I think. If I remember correctly. Uh, yes, the yeah. resource well pressurizer. Yeah. And um, so, um, yeah, just to, to sum it up, we wanna go to a couple of stuff we did for update four and just explain a little bit what, 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 were, what were they thinking? And uh, I'm going to explain what were we thinking um, when we came up with these buildings. And uh, not diving in too deep, because uh, somebody has to stop me. I can nerd out on this for hours. But uh, we'll just look into like a few specific things that we did for Update 4, like starting with the resource well pressurizer. Right. So um, essentially, we looked into uh, what it what it in it in its essence is and we looked into fracking and fracking essentially is a horrible thing to do to extract resources so um so let's it, put that in the game in a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it's, yes pretty much fracking. our logic i mean that's horrible that's yeah. horrible that's it's great better. yes nice it sounds like something <laughs> fix it would do let's yeah, go exactly um, but uh, and then we looked like yeah it uses pressure right to flush out resources and everything but um, in reality it's not as awesome it's just really dirty and horrible but it's not not as awesome it just uses water and a mix of chemicals and waters uh, flushed into the earth to get out stuff but and we said you know what. <laughs> What the hell? No way. Uh, we want to have like pressure built up by smashing stuff. Um, so we looked into having like a, a thing hitting the ground over and over again, like um, and creating like a lot of um, a lot of violent uh, effects uh, doing that way. And along the way, we w we went through a couple of different concepts and ideas, and we went f with the three arms holding stuff and then smashing it into the ground, creating pressure that way. It a lot of sense in the real world but the real world is boring and this is much more violent and destructive so of course <laughs> we went for that and part of the concepting that we did was also some of the stuff that is not as glamorous and interesting and that is visualizing and concepting and figuring out a lot of game mechanical things finding out the exact distances the placement of stuff what assets do we need to produce to make that happen in the environment to make it look good so it's uh, yeah it's it's essentially not just the building but everything around it and everything and there's a lot of uh, it's it's a lot of passing the ball back and forth between like game design art and um and also tech art and programming who are essentially uh, we're essentially the, the the destroyers of dreams for us to say well that's nice but we can't have that because this and this so um we go back and forth until we figured that out but the yeah the the pressure walls were a lot of fun in that sense um so this is like the the measurements of the nodes themselves to make sure that everything exactly fits. We need to figure out where the nodes are in the world, mm -hmm. how many nodes there are actually, like, uh, and that is very, very game design driven. And then, of course, we have to figure out if you build a building, when you place it into the environment, it needs to fit in there and connect with the environment correctly. And yeah, so there's a lot of back and forth and figuring out. And that is what is one of the biggest thing I would say about right. the pressure walls. The blender, the blender. Yeah, that was also a really fun building. Yes, in all its very glory. Ominous. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it is. This, so this is from the test level, I think. We have like a scene that we mm. use for testing and it's just like flat ground with nothing on it and just like... Some nodes and a big white wall somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there or not, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it looks very ominous, but the blender, yeah, it's... Uh, it was... It was uh, pretty interesting because... We were very, very much, uh, very much restricted by, of course, like every building. I, I should probably start by explaining that, like every building, every new factory building that we do has its uh, visual foundation in the idea of what recipes does it have, what does it produce, what does it uh, consume, how big is it, how modular should it be, and when you have all these filters already, you cannot go completely crazy anymore. You have to design something fitting to that. So we had this very weird building that 
ate up solid stuff and fluid stuff and created both fluid and solid products, which was really fun to figure out. And by fun, I mean partly fun and partly it was a pain in the ass to figure out because what is this thing? The name was actually pre there pretty early, the blender, because it blends different materials and different resources. And we thought, well, why the hell not do a blender? Because um, personally, I'm a big fan of just using like smaller things that uh, no play on like experiences that people have in the real world and taking it over into like those sci-fi fantasy, whatever crazy world. So we thought, well, let's make it a blender then. We partly looked into like existing mechanical stuff like giant blender tanks in, uh, in, in factories smaller home blenders for your kitchen and all that stuff. But at the same time, we had to look into the size restrictions. Game design said two inputs, two fluid inputs, and a fluid output and a solid output. So that's already kind of a big building. So we did these blockers that you see here and all their glory. We usually do that in the editor in Unreal and just block out using basic geometric forms just to come up with, yeah, with the size and essentially the boundaries for the building. And it, it's interesting because you can definitely see the blender there, even in the block at it. It could totally, that's the building, essentially. Yeah, it's like a uh, silhouette. It's yeah, it's the base. The basis is usually there using the block out. It's just a reality to check to see is that, does that size even make sense? Hmm. Um, wow. is that, was that see... block out like playable or was it just for visually uh, testing it? It was just for visual tests. Right. We did it in the editor and it was just there. It was not a buildable. You could not interact with it. You could not attach anything to it. It was pretty much just, yeah, just a, a visual blob of yeah. uh, basic geometry. And on that basis, we went to the next phase and thinking, okay, what does it actually do? Because most buildings, we want to have a direction. Where do the resource inputs go? What does it do? And where is it processed? And where does it come out? So you need to have like a feeling of it goes through direction. Uh, it goes along a path, along a f production path, so to speak, in a building. So there were these uh, concepts until we finally settled for this one. You may know that some things are a bit different from the final product because the concepts we do are not uh, engineering blueprints. There are concepts, there are art concepts. So the 3D artist fills in any gaps or corrects any uh, rough edges along the way in the model. And we also look along the way of the 3D production, we see we have certain stages where we see, does this still make sense? And do every once in a while do like reality checks, do have like these stage gates. Uh, there's someone sometimes called like in projects where you say, okay, this is cool. We all agree this is cool. Let's keep going so we don't end up having like a final product and say nah, maybe not let's start from the concept phase again because that will eat would eat up way too much of our time then the next stage after that was to well we need cool animations so how does everything get processed and especially in that building we decided we want to have like some nice robot arms because the world of satisfactory is so much about factory so much about buildings so much about cold machines it's nice to have a little bit of personality and also satisfactory has a lot of i mean more it it's it has a lot of goofy stuff going on here and there overall it's an engineering game but uh, we like to throw in a little personality and humor every once in a while without yeah, I think there's like one example is the like personal minor right there's there's still like a lot of personality in in various places in the um, buildings so yeah, the oh, personal thanks. minor absolutely love. Yeah. And I wish we had more of that. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. really, really nice. Yeah. It's really cute. Speaking of personality, have... I think the drones have like Yeah, I think drones a have a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The personal minor looks like it's taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well I mean that's part of the personality, I yeah. think. That's, <laughs> that's that's part of the lore, baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist: the the yeah. ore comes from the personal miners. They poop it out. Yeah, exactly. What's more human uh, than that? All right, sorry. Right. Yeah, and the drones. The drones were essentially made the same way. Uh, in the bottom right, you see this horrible block out. Um, that looks amazing. Which, yeah, <laughs> and we use that to just figure out how big is it. 
And one of the guides for figuring out the size of the drones was actually how much does the cargo, how many inventory slots does it have? So it has to be something in between a personal storage chest and an industrial storage container. So it has to be something in between. So we need to, we tweaked a lot of that. Also figuring out like at what altitude does it still need to be uh, visible and recognizable. So based on that, we did, yeah, a lot of exploration for the Eve, for the visuals of that thing. And one of the basis, basic things was we want something like the, like the portable miner because it's just so much fun and it's cute. And it goes, yeah, it goes with the, with the logic that it has some, obviously it has, does have some artificial intelligence uh, in it. So after the first initial sketches that were discarded for various different reasons, partly technical, partly aesthetical, we uh, settled for this one. And it is essentially a mixture of the stuff below it's the mixture of like the jet engines of an F-14, a bumblebee, or generally like a bee, because they're nice, they're, 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 uh, yeah, they're workers, and um, of course the portable miner, and some weirdly near future tech drone, like a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So that is where we essentially went with that. We wanted to add some personality and we wanted to have it fly vertically, but also straight because we wanted it to be fast. And when you think, for example, of, uh, about a helicopter, oh, it's probably not that fast. So we added this, uh, the way of giving it like rotor blades for vertical takeoff and landing, but also giving it like, um, like giving it wings and jet engines so that it can go from A to B rather quickly. And they're pretty fast. Anybody who tried to stand on top of it, uh, they know. I've seen videos of that. Yeah, I, I've never yeah. done that. <clears throat> really? I haven't either. No. But I've seen people do it. It's illegal, as far as I can tell. It's, it's one of the first things I tried. <laughs> 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 like proof of concept. <laughs> I mean, everyone's everyone stood on the uh, like the dropship as well, right? You know, everyone, oh, yeah. everyone no, tries no, it. Everyone tries it. You're going to jail. <laughs> the 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 top right one kind of looks like a container that sprouted legs, and now I kind of want <laughs> a container to, walk to just away. walk around. Ah! Oh, let me see. Portable <laughs> container. Yeah, when's it coming? <laughs> Portable container. Oh, on on a little leash you can take with. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> it's all right. One dollar no, DLC. That's all that's talking to DLC. Our character talking to you right there. Okay, Don't worry. Community all managers can... have confirmed it. It's happening. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. You can confirm it's maybe coming, but maybe it's not. Yeah. So do a QA post, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> brace yourselves for not bracing yourself. <laughs> One thing um, that I think yeah. is cute: the the antenna part of like the it's like a little bee. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yes. Cute. Yeah, yeah we wanted we wanted it to have. I mean, how how can we show personality on a yeah. on a machine like that? Yeah. And it's obviously got to be something small because we can't have it running around, jumping around, or anything. So uh, yeah, and then we just wanted it to have these little uh, beetle or bug, these feelers or antennae, um, which also helped uh, eventually with the with the charging animation. So. Like it, like it drops the little feelers when it gets tired, and then it just oh. raises it again. And adorable, yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy this level of detail, and and I and I get the feeling that a lot of people won't pick up on all these little bits of detail, but they probably feel it coming through. Like they feel feel it coming across. But like, how does it feel going into this much research and putting all these little details, but then like a lot of people won't point it out to themselves? Does that bother you at all, or is it just kind of like that's how it is? What's your uh, no? The thing is, the thing is that yeah, you you go a lot into details. I mean, uh, you discuss details that most people will probably not care about. But I think you still you there's a lot of things. Uh, the the amount of work that you put in there, it's got to be a reasonable amount of work when you right. look at the production picture, of course. But uh, it's still worth it because mm. you can still feel it. Um, and there's there's a really interesting quote from, from, from Peter Jackson. 
um, who's uh, obviously a complete nerd about what he does. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty funny that he he mentioned like there was there was a chest. He showed like a chest that was made, and the little uh, the little screws and bolts on the chest, they had like patterns on them, uh, and some metal worker put little patterns on it, and it was in the background somewhere in uh, in uh, Bilbo's home. And then in uh, in an interview, they asked like, "But do you even see details like that?" And he said, "Yeah, probably not. Maybe it's off camera, but I don't care because even if it's off camera, it's still uh, it, you can still feel it. And if people yeah. don't see it, it still influences the actors and everybody on set, yeah. and everybody gets more yeah involved with yeah, it." Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, and I, I totally get that. Um, but again, it's a thin line. Do not go mm. crazy about stuff that nobody right. will ever see but also you should care so mm -hmm. it's like if you don't if it's not there you kind of miss it so i i, exactly. I see what you mean yeah. with the feel thing it's 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 like the bass player it's yeah. like the bass player <laughs> and i play bass i can poke joke it <laughs> it's fine it's fine you miss yeah, it when it's gone yeah <laughs> all right yeah for sure drones Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, we were just, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, the drone port, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's less, uh, yeah, it's a bit less to talk about, but it's the same thing, um, <clears throat> with blocking blockouts. This was essentially our first idea. We wanted to have a big drone control tower, like a port. You have the inputs and outputs on the bottom, and then you have this tall thing, like having like a big majestic building to put up. But as you all know, uh, we went from the left concept to the right one um partly because it's just it's just more economic so it's less triangles uh it's uh less polycount and um less texture texture space etc but also mostly because it gives player enough choices if they want to build a tower they can build a tower it's more of a platform so you can make it into whatever you want um mm -hmm. so we decide to scrap the giant tower i remember a meeting i was in when mark and Burke talked about this, and I remember Burke being, I don't remember who said it, but someone was like, why are they so tall? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know, because it's cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, but I totally understand the thing where like, yeah, but if, mm -hmm. if you make them modular in that sense, then you can decide if you want them to be towers or not, instead of them always yeah. being like a huge chunk of your factory in, in certain senses. Yeah, and of course, and that's part of the concept art phase. So uh, if you want to be a concept artist, prepare to get your work thrown out the window on a regular basis. <clears throat> but that's just part of the process of reaching the best possible thing in the end for the product and which means for the player and having fun with it. So uh, yeah, I love the lights in the updates so much. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. yeah, they're OK. <laughs> God damn it, they're so good. Um, they're amazing. I, I love what yeah. people have done with them like, yeah. in, their, in their build. It's unbelievable. It's one of like the most uh, one of the coolest things we've added. Yeah, the community. What the community did with it. It's yeah. It's it's, crazy. it's yeah. It's really crazy. And um, yeah, we see here. It's pretty straightforward. It, it's concepts for lights that we thought of. And again, you see like looking into the sizes, looking into placement options and looking to um, make it fit to existing buildings. Because what we usually do is we take existing buildings and see what kind of logic can we just recycle and reuse. Because Fixit would obviously not use 10 different types of bolts or screws, for example. Um, it would be reused. So we try to reuse uh, like uh, engineering approaches as much as possible. And on the right side, you see the street lights that we have in the game now, and they're they're a very old 3D model. Um, I can't tell you how old. I probably should know that, but <laughs> it is um, it's, it's like part of even the closed alpha, like the pre-alpha build that we had. So they're really old, Speci specifically the one to the right, the street light one. Yeah, that's been in the that's that's something that we've tried for a long ass time, or like there was a model for it at least for a long time. Exactly. The model was around and we just cleaned it up, essentially. So it was it was an archaeological find that we polished and now you all have it in your factories. <laughs> uh, power storage. Yes, it was also kind of fun. And um, I remember talking to um, to the game director, Mark, 
and it was like pretty clear like power storage that should just be it is essentially just a battery so let's make it a battery a giant battery <laughs> so we looked into different uh, battery uh shapes and tried out a little bit with stuff and um yeah, at that time my... cute. yeah i'm i'm at, at at first my favorite was the the right one the wow. rounded off the elongated one mm -hmm. It was kind of my favorite, but uh, because I the plan was to have like an animation, like the top part, the connectors that they uh, they fold out, oh, I see. and then you have the electricity effect on it when it when it charges. So right. uh, that would have been fun. But then again, uh, the requirements came in uh, about like uh, we tried around with a few block outs and found that well, it should be a round one like a square foundation size. And then the foundation size essentially uh, made the decision for us and said, well, no, we're going to go for that design. And again, here we needed to figure out some animation, some feedback, because is it charging or is it, uh, is it charging um, factory, factory, your factory right now? Is it empty? So we need a bit of feedback, more feedback than the UI. So this is where this came in. And on the right, uh, Third here, you can see the final mesh, which is pretty close to the concept. Equipment, of course, uh, update four had some pretty nice equipment. Yeah, the zipline tool, which was kind of a weird idea that uh, just happened along the way and which was just um, thrown think, into the game. I think it was Stefan, right? I think Stefan. I'm pretty, Stefan? Sure, yeah. Yeah. pretty sure like this was prototyped and like on on like a at the sideline, Stefan made this and got it like working. Yeah, yeah. he he does that. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> he, does that. he does that. He kind of just does that. I mean, yeah, it goes rogue and just like there's like something. a couple more things that he's kind of done. Just, yeah, he just kind of did it. Yeah, yeah a, a couple of our cool features in the game are just people just do it. Yeah. It just, yeah, that sounds crazy. Yeah, right. Let's just do it. Whatever. <laughs> and this is one of those. It's like funny. The tool. This is the first time I've realized there's a button on the zipline there. Oh yeah, that opens the thing. Because you don't, because yeah, the I hand mean, like blocks it in the in the game, so you don't really see the button. You just see the the effect of it. Yeah, you see it a little bit on the side. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. We uh, the original plan was to make it a lot more prominent, but of course, when you then put it into first person, uh, it sometimes it gets covered. But it is there, so yeah, it was it was one of the basic ideas. And as you can see in the top uh, in the, um, in the bottom, uh, we have, we we based it on some of the existing equipment because we always look into what we have, which is also pretty pretty regular thing when you do art direction it's like okay we need new tools what tools do we have what do they look like and what's the logic behind it what's the engineering behind it and there's also the reason why this looks a little bit more uh, jury rigged it looks a little bit more put together and bolted together is that this is not fix it official fix it uh sanctioned equipment oh. this is essentially what you put together yourself using the newly Ooh. discovered criterion um, that's why it has a criterion spool so this is essentially the pioneer thinking well i'll just use a little bit of my my off time to create a creative time a weird tool <laughs> creative time in the game yeah time. you're every using second, creative time yeah. yeah yeah every second friday you can take some time to make whatever you want is the gaffer tape uh, detail in the game i can't remember um it looks different it looks uh, it, it looks different now because at some point we changed it because we again another thing consistency we had uh we decided not to use like silver gaffer tape because um, on the Nobelisk, there is some fixed branded uh, uh, adhesive tape. Right. So uh, fixed would probably not uh, issue to Pioneers two different types of gaffer tape. Gotcha. Um, so that's, that's the a... fun details. That Gotta get the lore to... right, guys. That, that's Gotta a very interesting right. detail. Yeah. Hmm. That's so definitely that's not we... like communicated yeah. in the game in any way. Apart from like no, no, it's, you can pick up on that if you look into it, and if you don't care about it, that's also fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 part of our job to look into that, and yeah, nice. have a uh, have a craft, uh, yes, have a, uh, have a patch, and was pretty straightforward actually because we we needed to have 
a version of the jetpack that has a helicopter-like um, movement. We needed to figure out, does it use up fuel or does it use up maybe batteries or is it connected to some power grid? Um, so that was part of the ideas. Like if you see like the first three one, three idea sketches were not just visually different, uh, exploring different directions, but also like the one on the right has like these big battery packs uh, in there. So um, it wasn't clear at that point, does it have fuel? Does it use batteries or whatever? Uh, in the end, of course, we settled for being close to your power lines and it has wireless power connections to those. So um, visually we agreed on kind of a mixture of all the different elements. Yeah, um, you can see a lot of all the designs in the last one. Yeah. It's like the mid part of the butterfly thing, the 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 charging, the, the battery is in the middle, and then you have still have the wings and of course the rotor blades. So it's it's it became a mixture of a helicopter. And of course there's some uh, Terminator Hunter Killer thing <laughs> in there too. Because they're awesome. I guess there's a little bit of like marriage between gameplay and, and art style here as well, where like because I correct me if I'm wrong, but the decision to have it be driven by like nearby power. Is, is very mandated by the gameplay because we didn't want the hover pack to be your exploration tool, so to speak. Like it's supposed to be there yes. when you're building. Absolutely. Is it, it was definitely a requirement by game design. We need to tie the player somehow to building in a factory with it and not just, otherwise it would have been a flying cheat, <laughs> essentially. <Yeah. laughs> Because I know a lot of people probably will see the the third one with the batteries and be like, "Oh, that's something that we wanted for like coming we, soon. We coming requested soon. it. <laughs> and that's something Update that we, five. Yeah, well, that's something that yeah, we maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> probably not though. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably not. Uh, controls were, of course, we wondered how do we how do you control this thing, and then we wanted it to be partly like a game controller, like an old school game controller, because a lot of the fixed equipment is very chunky and sturdy. Uh, like when you look at these construction work grade phones that have like these solid big cases around it, we wanted it to be like that. Uh, but also looked into VR controllers, how they work and how. Uh, and there, there was actually, we thought about how you would actually control it, like going up, down, sideways, uh, strafe and um, thrust with that thing, uh, like like creating thrust going forward and backward and stuff. Uh, so um, this is, yeah, there was a lot more thought put into than theoretically necessary, but practically it helped it make a little bit more sense. Nice. That's it. That's it, for, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Neat. It's a lot of stuff, though. Yeah, that's crazy. I hope I ho hope that was insightful to a lot of people because it was to me. It's un it's uncanny, like how much detail you go into, and it's like you know. I guess every discipline goes into a lot of detail. You know, if if every discipline were to go through and explain every little bit that they did, there'd be so much that everyone would miss. But uh, I mean, the art side of it and uh, the concept art side of it, especially, is just it's it's a discipline that I know nothing about. So. This was still all like super new to me and super impressive, even though I'm, you know, I'm on this team. Yeah. There's still so much stuff here that I didn't know. Even if you, yeah, it's like, even if you see the last, the final design, it's still so interesting to see sort of the, the road to it. There's a lot of, re like the, the drone tower thing, for instance, like that makes sense when you, when you think about the, the decision we actually took with yeah. like having it be modular and having it close to the ground so like you could pick and choose yeah. sort of and then it makes like even though i was on team tower when i saw the first design the first time i'm like yeah but it makes sense so it was a good like i'm glad that we're taking some right decisions sometimes <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes <least>. yeah <laughs> so a lot of people like i was keeping an eye on chat and a lot of people were they enjoyed your presentation torsten thank you very much uh yes. thank you yeah, yeah it was, sure it was nice there. to share that with yeah. people